Let's talk about what I think is one of the most exciting parts of the Redis modules, Redis JSON. This basically turns Redis into a full-featured, horizontally scalable, NoSQL document store. That's a big deal, right? I mean, instead of using some external third-party system and its own complexity and having to understand how it works and is configured, you can do all this within Redis now. So the nice thing about Redis JSON is that it allows you to update individual fields within your structured data atomically, right? So you might say to yourself, hey, what's the big deal about storing JSON? It's just a string at the end of the day, right? But think about that. Like if you really just wanted to update one field in a JSON structure, without Redis JSON, you'd have to read back that entire JSON structure, change the piece that you want and write the whole thing back. And parsing that could be time consuming and resource intensive. With Redis JSON, you don't have to deal with that. You can just say, hey, I wanna update this piece of my data structure, go deal with it Redis JSON and do it atomically while you're at it. Let's look at some examples. So here's an example JSON data structure, very simple. Uh, let's say that I'm keeping a little database of uh, Star Trek ships, and we want to keep track of what the captains and designations of those ships are. So for the ship Enterprise, the captain is Kirk, and its designation is NCC-1701. How would you do that? So we could just say json.set, these are actual Redis CLI commands here, enterprise.captainKirk. So that sets things up with our initial data there of we're mapping captain and Kirk, under the structure enterprise. So already we have this nested data structure there with one line of code. I can get that data back very quickly using just json.get enterprise. Again, just Captain Kirk is what comes back. That's what you'd expect. Now let's say I want to add some data, some new data to that structure. I can do that with one line as well. And again, without having to retrieve the whole thing first. So I could just say json.set enterprise.designation to add that designation field and I'll give it a value of NCC 1701. Pretty simple syntax there. And now I've built up my whole structure. I can just say json.get enterprise again and get back the complete structure, Captain Kirk, designation NCC 1701. Very cool stuff. It's just that simple. Now to actually use that, you could use the command line interface there, either directly or through a lower level API like Redis PY. But there's also something I wanna introduce now as well called Redis Ohm. And this is a high level API to Redis that wraps the complexity of Redis JSON and Redis search. So you don't really have to think about how it works under the hood at a low level. It stands for Redis object mapping. So it's a high level API that just lets you deal with native data structures. So within Python, for example, I can just deal with Python classes and Redis Ohm will just sort of magically take care of storing it and querying that data with very simple commands like save or find or something like that. So it's a much easier way to interact with uh, Redis JSON and Redis Search, and even Redis Core. All the modules and the Redis commands under the hood are abstracted away, so you don't have to think about it. It's just like writing a normal script. Uh, you'll see how simple it is when we go into an example. It's available for several languages, .NET, Node.js, Python, and Spring. Uh, since most of you that are my students are Python people, we're gonna stick with Python for our example here, but same concept applies to these other languages as well. Really easy to use. For example, here's how you would actually set up a nested data structure. This is coming from our activity that we're about to do, by the way. All you need to do is say from Redis Ohm, if we're in Python, import the stuff we need, in this case, JSON model, and embedded JSON model, and field. So with embedded JSON model, we can embed one structure within another. And, and Redis Ohm will just figure out how to make that work in JSON and with Redis JSON. We are then going to define a product class here that contains a stock code as a string, a description as a string, and a unit price, which is a floating point number in this example. And since it's deriving from embedded JSON model, it will automatically inherit all of the Redis own features for actually writing that out to, to Redis and reading from it or querying it. Because it's an embedded JSON model, I can embed it within another class here. So I'm setting up an order class here that derives from just JSON model. It contains an invoice number, which is a string, a quantity, which is an integer. And here I'm saying I'm going to index that for searching later on. We'll talk about that more in a little bit. We're gonna have an invoice date. That's just a date time date, a customer ID. And here we're embedding that product class and calling it item. So that item field there will expand into its own product data structure here as well. And finally, we'll end up with a string based country code as well. So that's Redis JSON and Redis Ohm. We have enough now to get started and import some data just using Redis Ohm in a structured format. So let's dive in and make that happen. All right, so now let's go beyond streaming the data and just printing it out to streaming the data and actually inserting it into Redis 
and not just as key value pairs in a cache, but as structured JSON data that we can query later on. Pretty cool stuff. All right, so we're gonna start off by using the same uh, stream order script that we used before to publish the data. So just to review, let's type in less stream orders dot py and remind ourselves what that does. You can see I've already previously put in my credentials for connecting to Redis into the Redis object. And all it's doing is going through every line in my online retail.csv file, decoding it into a Python dictionary and adding it to the order stream using the xadd command. All right, very simple. Let's get out of that with Q. Now the other piece of the puzzle is going to be actually receiving those orders and inserting them into Redis using Redis JSON. Now to cheat, we're gonna use Redis ohm because that's even easier. So let's take a look at that. So there's gonna be two pieces of this. Let's start with the sub and insert orders.py script. So let's say nano sub and insert orders.py. First thing we need to do is replace that uh, connection line with your credentials. I've already copied that off here. So I'm gonna go ahead and paste that in to save me some typing. And do make sure that you have the decode underscore responses equals true bit at the end there as well. So you're gonna to need to put in your password, host port and decode responses equals true. I'll delete that placeholder here. And again, just like before in our streaming example, we're gonna X read all the latest data from the order stream, go through each result, uh, unpack it a little bit there. And now instead of just printing out the resulting order, we're going to take the order dictionary that was encoded on the stream going in and bust that out into a product object and an order object. And the order object contains the product object, okay? So let's start by looking at the order. It contains an invoice number that's being extracted from the invoice number field from our CSV data that we piped in. The item is going to refer to this product class up here instead. So we're actually embedding one data structure inside another to sort of illustrate what you can do with Redis JSON. So that product structure contains the stock code, the description, and the unit price of that product. We then associated with the order, have the quantity, the invoice date, which we're converting into a date time ob object, the customer ID, and the country, okay? All right, and we'll go into what these product and order classes are shortly, but let's just finish this script because we're almost through it. Uh, notice that this isn't a try except block. That's because there is some bad data in here. There's a lot of rows in our original source data where the customer ID is empty. I'm not really sure why that is, but because we didn't clean that data out ahead of time, we are going to get some exceptions here when we try to extract that customer ID that does not exist in my dictionary. So we're just gonna use a try except block to deal with that. If we do get an error on us trying to decode that data, we'll just print the error out and continue on to the next line, to the next entry in the stream rather. Once it is successfully inserted though, we will print out the key that came back from Redis that we can later refer to. And then we will call order.save to actually commit that order to disk in persistent storage in Redis JSON. All right, all right, let's hit control O to write that out, enter and control X. And let's take a look at the schema.py file that we included within that uh, sub and insert orders py file. So nano schema.py. And here's where all the magic of Redis ohm happens. Okay, so we're just importing date time because we have a date time field in here. From Redis ohm, we're importing JSON model, embedded JSON model, and field. Okay, so product is derived from embedded JSON model. So this just means it's a snippet of data that we can embed in a larger JSON object. That product contains a stock code description and unit price like we saw before. The order class, it turns out, is derived from JSON model from Redis ohm. Okay, and that contains the invoice number, the quantity. And here we're saying that we want to actually index that quantity field because later on we're going to be querying based on it. So we're gonna say field index equals true, which tells Redis Ohm that I want to create an index for this field because I wanna search on it later on. Invoice date is gonna be of date time dot date class, uh, customer ID is an integer, item is that product embedded JSON model and a string country. So because it's derived from JSON model, I can now do things like call save on it to save it to disk in Redis JSON. And it's just that simple. From our programming standpoint, it looks just like any other uh, Python class. So that's the beauty of Redis Ohm. It just makes it super, super easy to use these features from Python or from any other language that Redis Ohm supports like Node.js. All right, control X, nothing we had to change in there. So let's try it out, shall we? 
As before, we'll start by publishing data into our stream. So we'll say Python 3 stream orders.py. And that's chugging away, populating my stream. Okay, so as before, we're gonna have one tab here that's gonna be publishing data into the stream and the other one that's going to be reading from the stream and inserting it into Redis. So first we need to make sure that we have the proper environment variable for Redis ohm set up. Because as soon as I open up that second tab, uh, it's not gonna be there anymore. So let's start by getting that from our existing tab. I'm just gonna say env and pipe that into grep redis. All right, so there's the Redis OM URL environment variable that we need for Redis OM to work. I'm gonna copy that and open a new tab. And we'll say export, paste. All right. Cool. So now this should work. So let's go back to our first tab there and actually kick off our script for streaming the data. So that's chugging away, populating our order stream. And from here, we'll consume it and insert it into Redis. So let's say Python 3 sub and insert orders.py. And off it goes. Cool, it worked. All right, so we're happily inserting data into Redis JSON here right now. And it that's pretty awesome. Cool. We're actually basically using Redis Cloud as a distributed uh, NoSQL database here. Cool. And we can actually see that happening. If we go back to our browser and look at our Redis dashboard here, uh, let's go ahead and click on Redis course and go to metrics. That's pretty cool. You can see how it's being used over time. We have this dashboard here that's uh, showing just how much we're using in terms of operations per second, the overall latency, uh, operation, you know, writes per second, reads per second, breaks it down for you. So you can actually see the performance of the Redis Cloud instance that we're using for this database. Pretty cool stuff. Let's uh, go back to here, and eventually that will get through 10,000 entries. So it will take a few minutes, so I'm just gonna come back when that's done. And by the way, right now we're seeing some of those exceptions that we talked about where the customer ID is blank. There are large stretches of the data being published into that stream that have no customer ID. And since in the end we want to create uh, customer-based recommendations, we're just gonna discard that data and catch those exceptions and just not insert anything in that case. And we're back into some valid data here now. So I'm going to come back when this is done. All right, that took, you know, five minutes or so to get those 10,000 entries uh, in there. But it finished. So I'm just going to control C out of this. And we can close that tab out because it's currently stored in Redis in the cloud for us. And uh, stream order's already finished on the other side. That terminated on its own because it got through the whole stream. Cool. All right, so we have successfully parsed data and streamed it. And on the other end of the stream, we've inserted it into Redis JSON into what is essentially a horizontally distributed NoSQL document data store. Pretty awesome stuff. So next, let's talk about how to actually get that data back. Okay, so we've successfully structured our data and stored it using Redis JSON. What do we do with it now? Well, you probably want to query that data somehow and get it back, right? That's where Redis search might come in. So it can handle all the indexing and querying for more complex search operations. Redis JSON can do some of this on its own, but Redis Search really opens it up to a wider array of possibilities. So Redis Search can handle full text search and fuzzy search. So we're not just restricted here to key value lookups or um, you know Boolean queries and things like that. We can actually search for text just like something like Elasticsearch could do right out of the box here with Redis. So no need for these external third-party systems again. And with Redis Ohm, we don't really need to think about it. So that's, again, the beauty of Redis Ohm. It abstracts away all the complexity of what's going on under the hood. And, you know, you don't have to think about what Redis Search is doing versus Redis JSON. Redis Ohm just figures it out for you. So I can just say something like results equals order dot find order dot quantity greater than 100. And Redis Ohm will go out and say, OK, I'm going to figure out how to execute this query. Maybe it involves Redis Search. Maybe it doesn't. In this case, we're just saying we want to get back orders with a quantity field that's greater than 100. I could do much more complicated things though. I could chain a bunch of queries together there and do a more complex expression. It would still work. I could do some full text search there. It would still work. I could do fuzzy search. It would still work. Redis Ohm makes it all happen. And the beauty is that it just happens in a very Pythonic way. So you can write these very natural looking lines of code here that do exactly what they sound like using Redis Ohm. So let's dive in and actually see this in practice. 
All right, so querying all that order data that we previously put into Redis JSON is really easy with Redis Ohm, but let's talk about it. There is one step though that we did not talk about in the slides, and that is the need to explicitly index that data before we can query it. So there's a couple of scripts we're gonna look at here. The first one is index orders. So let's just do a less on that. Not much to it. All it's doing is importing migrator from the Redis Ohm package along with our schema file that defines the data structures that we have stored, okay? And if you recall, we indicated in that schema that the quantity field was indexed. We then call run on the migrator object, and that's it. Now there is actually a command line migrator tool you could just run instead, but you know, figuring out all the parameters and stuff, it's easier to just do it this way, I think. Let's uh, take a look at schema.py again, just to remind ourselves of how that works. So again, on quantity here, we've said, field index equals true. And that's telling it that we want the quantity field indexed. In this case, nothing else, because all we're going to be querying on is quantity in our little example. But if you knew you wanted to search on other fields, you could index those as well, okay? So let's make sure that our environment variable is still in place for Redis ohm. Uh, let's say env pipe into grep Redis. Okay, it is, Redis ohm URL. If you need to set that again, please do, or even better, just you know put it into your profile so you don't have to worry about it anymore. So let's go ahead and kick that off, python3 indexorders.py. That was quick. All right, so now we can actually query that data based on the indexed quantity field. To do that, we're gonna take a look at the findorder.py script. Again, we'll just less that. And you can see that's really just a one-liner. We're just saying order.find, and then we can put whatever expression we want in there, and it will just magically work thanks to write us home. So in this case, we're saying order.quantity, saying that we want the quantity field of the order class, and find uh, entries where the quantity is greater than 100. Print them all out. And for each one, we're gonna print out in each individual result that comes back from that query, uh, separated by a new line. Really, really simple, all right? So let's try it, convince ourselves that it works. Python 3 findorders.py. And there we have it. So that was pretty quick, right? You know, that was, uh, remember we had 10,000 entries in there that it just searched through in, you know, a fraction of a second. So that's pretty awesome. And pretty uh, large amount of results as well, by the way. Like that just goes and goes and goes and goes. So really a testament to how quick Redis can be. And you can see that it did work. Uh, we're getting back instances where the quantity is greater than 100. Apparently uh, somebody wanted to buy 120 packs of 72 RetroSpot cake cases. Wow, uh, people are into cake accessories, it seems, in a very big way. They must be reselling them or something. That's, uh, that's a little weird, but so be it. Hey, you know, I could talk a little bit about uh, outlier detection here, but this isn't a data science course. <laughs> that's a different course. But the point here is that querying your data in Redis JSON using Redis Ohm is super easy, and it will manage all the complexity of whether or not to use Redis Search under the hood for you, so you don't have to think about it. Redis Ohm, I love it, cool. All right, so we've seen inserting data into Redis JSON, getting it back. Uh, let's talk about some other cool Redis modules next.